Well, as I said at the beginning, I hope everybody is having a meaningful and a blessed Memorial Day weekend. This weekend is a time in which we remember all those who have sacrificed something or everything uh, for this country, for this nation, and all who reside in it. Now, often when we think about sacrifice, our minds go to the end result. They go to the big battles, the wars, those moments of heroic action. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think that the sacrifice starts much earlier. I think it starts as soon as one might enlist, in fact. Take for consideration the Navy SEALs. I'm sure everybody here has heard about them, the most elite or, or titled the most elite group in the Navy. For the individuals who make it to the point of being able to serve in this group, mind you, still challenging, they have to go through an even more challenging training process to get accepted and be called elite. The training is brutal, it's grueling, it's long, it's meant to get people to give up so that only the best might make it. According to the Navy website, talking about their training, these individuals will go through one week, and in that one week they will sleep four hours. Not four hours a day, four hours in the entire week. And in that week, they will run 200 miles. 200 miles on four hours of sleep. I can tell you I can't run 200 miles on the eight hours I got last night. Grueling, difficult, challenging. It's meant to make them consider if this is really what they are meant to do, if they will break the training officers do everything they can to see if these individuals can, in fact, make it or if they should simply give up. You see, suffering is never easy. It's never an easy thing to endure. I think it's safe to say that none of us here enjoy suffering. If I were to ask you all on the way out if you enjoy suffering, I think 100% of you would say, no, nope, not me. I don't want that. You see, whether it be a sore body from a hard workout or a migraine or a stomachache or whatever it is that we face, suffering is not something that we want. And when it starts happening, you might start to question, well, why is it happening? Why is it happening to me? Why is it happening today? Why? For those trainees, it might be a moment when the instructor zeroes in on them pushes them harder than anybody else, and they might wonder, why does he have a problem with me? Why is he picking on me? Why is he trying to get me to quit? And I don't think we're that different. Take a second and to think with me over the last year. Think of a day or a week when it seemed like everything was going wrong. I'm not talking about just one inconvenience. I'm talking about those times in your life where it felt like the snowball just kept rolling. It kept gaining size and speed, and it just kept on rolling through your life, causing more and more issues. Maybe it's a time when you uttered the phrase, when it rains, it pours. Difficulty comes, and when it does, you might find yourself grumbling to God, asking, why now? Why me? Why? In our reading for today from the book of Joel, we find ourselves right around the turning point for God's people. They're gonna, they've just received bad news, and soon they will receive a gospel promise. You see, Joel was a prophet of God, and he was sent to warn God's people of all of their sinfulness. Prior to this point, God's people, things were going relatively well for them, and because of that, they find themselves straying away. This isn't new. If you look through Scripture, you'll see this cycle. Good times come, they stray, and before long, bad times come, and they are brought back. That's what happens here. In the whole first chapter of Joel, Joel proclaims destruction and bad news, suffering to come. Joel says this in chapter 2, just a few verses before our reading for today. He says, before them fire devours, behind them a flame blazes. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, and behind them a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. 
I don't know about all of you, but this is a terrifying message. It sends shivers down my spine. Before them is perfection, the Garden of Eden. And behind them, a desert waste, night and day, destruction, suffering. You see, this terrifying warning was meant to bring people back. Joel is saying, repent. You've gone too far. This is what com is coming. God is going to allow an invading nation, the Assyrians, to come and destroy everything. Nothing will be left. Suffering will come and difficulty. And this isn't unique in Joel's time. You see, from the moment that sin enters into the world, God's people face challenges. They face struggle and brokenness and suffering. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't have a plan, or that he isn't there, or that he doesn't care. Have you ever had to learn a lesson the hard way? This might be hard to believe, but I was a rather stubborn child when I was growing up. When I got something in my head, it really didn't matter what somebody said. I was going to get that. I was going to do that thing that I wanted to do. I was stubborn. And I can remember in particular when we would go camping when I was just a little. My parents had this old propane lantern. I don't know what it was, but I was fascinated with this lantern. It was one of those ones that had the steel bags that would get real, real hot, and they'd glow, and that's where the light came from. But needless to say, the whole thing got very, very hot. And I don't know why, but I wanted to play with this lantern every time we went camping. Can't explain it. But every time I got close, my parents would warn, don't touch that, you'll get burned. Don't get near that, you're going to get burned. Stay away from the lantern, you're going to get burned. And I have to imagine that you can all just guess where this story ends. It ends with tears and me running back to them in need of aid and help and comfort. A lesson learned. But you see what's interesting is that I didn't need to face that consequence to learn that lesson. Stay away from the lantern, you're going to get burned. And it's no different for Joel and God's people. God says, stay with me, or you're going to get burned. Turn from me, and you're going to get burned. Please, just stay here, or you're going to get burned. Those lessons had been taught in a much more caring and simple way, but when we're stubborn, we get these ideas in our head, and before long, it's, well, let me just try. Let's just see what happens. Stay away you're going to get burned. It's the consequence for not listening to God's warnings. You see, God knows what's best for God's people. And you want to know what that is? It's God. God is best for his people. What's best for God's people is for them to remain in faith. And ultimately, that comes out when God sends a champion, his own son, to destroy all of these consequences, take them on himself, and then give us the reward and the victory. Fellow believers, it is difficult to face struggle with faith. But you know what the good news is? Is that you don't face it alone. God doesn't allow us to face those challenges by ourselves. Joel says this, Then you will know that I am in Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and that there is no other. Never again will my people be ashamed. Our entire reading from Joel is this gospel proclamation. It is good news for God's people. He has just said, stay with me or the Assyrians will come. But then he gives them this gospel truth that he says, everything you could ever need you will have in me. Everything. All that that has been lost, I will return to you, and so much more. You will be satiated if you simply remain with me. But then he goes farther, and he says, I'm going to remain with you. I'm going to stay with my nation. I'm going to stay with my people. We have a God who isn't this far-off being, but one who intimately knows us, who wants to be with us, who knows what we go through. You see, Jesus came into this world, and then he faced all the tempering and the training. He repelled the temptation of the devil. He faced the shouts and the jeers of those crowds calling for his death. He walked humbly 
with the cross to his own crucifixion, and he bowed his head to succumb to death. But see, he did that because he knew that in three days, death would stay dead and he would rise again. He does that for you and me. He takes that punishment that we deserve so that we might be victorious, that we might have eternal life, that we might be called the children of God. And even still, the Gospel of Joel in this message doesn't end there. Not only did Christ reside with his creation, and not only does he send his spirit to reside in each and every one of us in the waters of baptism, but he promises that all of these good news and all these truths that he has proclaimed, they're not temporary, they're eternal. No longer are those going to be taken away. No longer is God's people going to be put to shame. Rejoice that because of the sacrifice of Christ, our God paid for all of our debts and in love ensures that we will remain with him. He promises that none of these things will be undone. That means in times of struggle, whatever it is that you face, God is there. It means in those times when it feels like everything is going wrong, it's temporary. It means sin and suffering and death and everything else is temporary because only one thing is eternal, and that is our God and the promises that he bestows on us. In Christ, we are free. The truth is, we used to be bound by something, but now we are free in our Lord and Savior. We are free to abide in joy, endure in confidence, and even live in eternity with a Creator who wants nothing more than to abide with us, you and me, and lavish upon us everything we could ever want and need. As you go out this week, back to your lives, there's going to be moments where it seems unfair. Sin and brokenness will still be a part of your days or weeks or months, and there are going to be times when it just doesn't seem fair. But I invite you to remember that all of those things that you face, that you're going to face, they are temporary. God is eternal. Christ has won the battle on your behalf and mine. And even the most intimidating enemies even the hardest challenges, even the most unfair situations don't get to have a permanent hold on your life. Only Christ has that. We are eternally his. You have been set free to live as God's beloved children, and that is great news. Amen.